Well, you have to live and learn. I, uh, I've had a podcast on Anchor for quite some time. Uh, I guess since 2018. It's not the greatest, but I guess it's better than most. I foolishly, a month or so ago, decided to go with the Podbean podcast hosting and all that kind of thing. And immediately realized it was a mistake. I should have just done the month at a time, but I paid for a year and I got what I paid for. It's a piece of junk. Customer service is terrible. It takes forever. The fact, the fastest email I got was when I canceled, knowing full well I'd already missed their seven-day grace period. Um, but, you know, it's like you would record, you can't, well, you can't record video and then upload it. It won't take that file. So you have to transfer a file, at least with Anchor. I can upload my YouTube video and it'll just pull the audio off of it. So you can't do that with Podbean. Even when you record a podcast with Podbean on your phone, it doesn't upload half the time unless you just got perfect situation, which is just crazy. So you type in the title and some description because you know it's going to go live ASAP. And then you go on the site and it didn't upload. And then trying to find it or trying to get it onto their site was just a pain. And, you know, their vaunted advertising and all that kind of stuff was completely useless. So I finally realized, you know, I was wasting my time doing the podcast on there. Prefer doing these videos. And I just kind of transfer them over to Anchor in case you can't watch videos or prefer a podcast. So thank you guys for all your support and subscribing. I highly recommend um, not using Podbean. Um, just, uh, I mean, I'm big deal. I'm at 100 bucks. But I realized I just need to cut my losses, even though I should have just signed up for the $14, $15 a month. But I should have realized, I, I mean, I looked around and everybody acted like it was a good site. But just a clunky app, didn't really work well. They had this goofy live thing that sort of worked, but I, I just don't know. It just was unfortunate, wasted my time and money. Sorry for the rant. Now on to some more endurance news related type of stuff. Uh, Brad Stuhlberg, who I really enjoy following, he's got an interesting thing about mountains. And it's kind of fun that one of my good friends, Sarah, just got her permit to do the Ray Likes hike. If you're not familiar, that's a High Sierra hike. It's a beautiful loop, kind of incorporates part of the JMT PCT. And it's got some great passes here in the High Sierra, Eastern Sierra. So congratulations to her for getting a permit. Getting permits is often difficult. But Brad Stolberg says, three qualities of mountains useful for developing a philosophy of life. Firm and solid foundation from which everything else arises. Peak is striking, but life is on the sides. Sandsman's diverse weather. Some days beauty is obscure, some days it shines. And so that's definitely how mountains are. I've got quite a few friends who are really into climbing and hiking. Not climbing per se, like hanging up off of things like Alex Honnold, but climbing peaks that are doable. In fact, I had a friend just did this wonderful canyon hike in Utah this past weekend as well. Brad Stuber also has some great thing about cheat sheet on sustainable success, which I'm often talking about. And he says, be patient, focus on the process, pursue meaning, not happiness, surround yourself wisely, work hard, rest hard, ignore hike hacks, get coaching, be okay with failure, practice self-discipline, practice self-compassion, know where you're going, but where you know where you are. You are not your thoughts. You are not your feelings. You are the awareness that decides what to do with your thoughts and feelings. You are your actions. Every serious contemplative practice straightens identity by creating space between the former and the latter. Research shows if you go for broke, you often end up broke. If you swing for home runs, you often end up striking out. But if you just put the ball in play over and over again, good things tend to happen. Community is key with all the meters reflecting onto one another. Surround yourself wisely. And so it's basically, you know, Pick your friends well. So progress is a slog. It's so important to find joy in the work itself and the people you do it with. And I definitely have a great sports system, people I train with, hike with, <clears throat> and keep keep in touch with during these crazy times with all this COVID and stuff. Hanson, who's another person group that I really like, their tweets, Hanson Project, they say, there are many athletes that have goals of working harder than their competitors. Other athletes have been taught that it is far more important to work smarter than harder. I got some great news, and this is definitely how I feel. You can do both. You can work hard, but also train hard. And I see so many people do one or the other. Definitely, like, you know, mostly people, some people train real hard, but they, their focus is just completely all over the place, and they just don't really understand it. But I guess that's just the way it works. Training Peaks uh, just put out an article that was of interest. Not only is there no additional benefit to overconsuming protein, but there may be a detriment effect on your muscles. High-protein foods are more acidic and can lead to muscle breakdown if eaten in large amounts. 
yeah, it's just kind of like everything. You just need to do it in moderation. You know, just that's the way to work. Um, speaking of some success this past weekend, we had a high schooler break four minutes for, for a mile. Hobbs Kessler ran 357.66 in the indoor mile. And what's crazy is last year his indoor best was only 421. So he's improved by 23 seconds. Of course, I'm sure COVID had part to play with that. But then also COVID is allowing lots of people to really train from train really well. And then, of course, today, which is really weird being a Tuesday of all things, there was this amazing meet in Europe. And we had a young lady run. Her name's Lelem Halu, 19-year-old. She was a 2017 world champ, and she just destroyed Safan Hassan, uh, 832 in the uh, 3,000. Pretty amazing performance. And then later on, we had a 1,500 record by Ethiopia's Kade Tesege. She uh, beat the Baba's world record of 355, and she ran 353. And then, of course, Jacob Ingerson, another youngster, just ran 331.8 for the fifth best all-time performance of all time and just killed tons of other people in the race. So definitely interesting. You know, he just never seems to have a bad, <laughs> bad race. You know, he's been just running hard. I remember watching the World Championships even way back in, uh, you know, this, the fall um, Peter Bromka, he says, hey, USTF, why are you asleep the wheel of this season and letting all these scrappy meets do it on your own? Huge fan of sound running, trials of miles, and citrus mag, but we don't have, but we do have a national governing body of sport that's sponsored by Nike for a reason. Yeah, USA track and field gets a lot of crap, and rightly so. In fact, it seems like all the little guys have been putting on meets and doing what it takes here in America. And of course, if you watch Europe, you know, they're having world-class meets. They had it throughout the Diamond League throughout the summer and right this meet that just happened today. And I'm not sure what in the world we're doing here. Speaking of races being put on by smaller groups, Sound Running is going to put on on February 20th, a called the 10, a 10,000 meter race hosted by the Sound Running guys. And they're going to have a women's field of Gwen Jorgensen, Carissa Schweitzer, Eliza Cranny, Kim Connolly, Emily Enfield, and Alex McGoolin. So that will definitely probably be some fast times, hopefully, and we'll see some fun out of that. Um, speaking of some history, Olympic history, you know, we just had a Super Bowl where unbelievably, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I wanted to say the Patriots, but it was, you know, Tom Brady goes to the Buccaneers and wins at age 43. And so they're bringing up how Michael Carter won a, go won a medal in the Olympics and the shot put in 84 and then went on and won a uh, – Super Bowl, I had someone say, but wait, no, he didn't win in 84. And it's like, yeah, technically, I mean, okay, the Super Bowl is always the following year. So he played for the Niners in the 84 season. Super Bowl, of course, was in January 85. Um, Bullet Bob Hayes is the only athlete in history to win an Olympic gold and a Super Bowl first place medal trophies. He won two golds in 104 by 400, 4 by 4 100 relay at the 1964 Olympics and then won a Super Bowl um, way, way back then in 1964. Wow. I guess that's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, he was a Super Bowl in 1972, so 64 and then eight years later. You used to see that quite often. You have Olympic athletes, uh, especially sprinters, move over and, and compete in football and stuff. But, you know, now, thankfully, they're making a little bit more money and don't have to do it. I remember Ronaldo Nehemiah, the great hurdler, um, Played for the Niners for a while. It wasn't very good, but made some money. And I guess there was a 60-meter hurdler, American, I forget his name right now, who just tied or broke his American record. So some fast times by some Americans and, of course, some world fast times. So that's about all for Endurance News tonight. It is February 9th, 2021. And as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.